Hi, and welcome. I'm Dr. Kathy. And whether I was doing surgery in Guatemala, caring for infants or teaching neonatal exams in Tanzania, caring for burn victims in Niger, teaching healthcare science in Korea, or traveling to Shanghai to learn Chinese medicine, I noticed the same thing worldwide. Patients needed better, healthier food choices. So how was I going to take all of my skills and talents as a doctor and former chef, turn them into one career? That's when I had an idea. I was going to swap one white coat for another. Welcome to The Doctor Is In, Cooking with Kathy. Hi, this is Dr. Kathy, the chef. Now, part of my YouTube channel is not only to teach you how to turn otherwise unhealthy choices of food into something that your doctor would approve of eating, I'm also going to show you a little bit about the basics. And there's nothing more basic and fantastic than a good chicken stock. With it, you can make many things, chicken soups, gravies, uh, stews, lots of really fantastic things. So let's start with the basics and we're gonna make chicken soup. Hi, this is Dr. Kathy, the chef. Now, part of my YouTube channel is not only to teach you how to turn otherwise unhealthy choices of food into something that your doctor would approve of eating, I'm also gonna show you a little bit about the basics. And there's nothing more basic and fantastic than a good chicken stock. With it, you can make many things, chicken soups, gravies, uh, stews, lots of really fantastic things. So let's start with the basics and we're gonna make chicken soup. What do we need for that? Well, you need a big pan, big pot. We're gonna make a lot of it. Some water, obviously more water than this. This is a representation. Some chicken and your primary vegetables that were gonna to help to uh, put a great aroma to that particular stock. And we call these three um, vegetables, the best vegetables as sort of a base. Carrots, celery, and onions. Now you can see I've got three different kinds of onions here and I'll explain that in a few minutes. Now I'm gonna take my carrots and I'm gonna put them into my pan along with my celery, and I'm gonna show you how to cut carrots and celery in just a minute. And I also have some herbs, but I'll get to that in a moment as well. These are just gonna go right into my pan. on a sheet just now let's look at these onions I've got three different kinds of onions here there's lots of different kinds of onions that you can use each one of them has a little bit of a different flavor and a little bit of a different use this is a white onion sometimes called the Vidalia onion they're really sweet these are great to slowly saute and put into a French onion soup or to turn into a bacon and onion jam. I'll show you how to do that one another time. This is a red onion. These are great, sliced really thin and put into salads. They have a good color, they have a great flavor to them as well. And this is your standard just white onion and or yellow onion. And this is what we're gonna use for today. Now I wanted to show you something that many people wouldn't expect. I'll take off the price tag from this. Put these two to the side, we're not gonna use these. The outside of this is just dried onion. I'm actually gonna use it in my stock because it adds flavor. And I just wanted to make sure that this is clean. You don't want any sort of dirt on there. Now, I'm not going to show you today how to actually cut an onion like a professional because this onion doesn't need to be cut in any specific way. 
But what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to hold your knife. You wanna make sure that you've got a good grip on your knife and you can use this little dent here to hold your finger. Don't put your finger like this because it could slip off and cut, but you want a really nice good grip on this. And when you're cutting, we don't want to cut off our fingertips. We want to turn them under and we're going to use our knuckle as a guide. You can see if I'm doing it like this, I'm not cutting off my fingertips. So you just want to cut down nice and evenly. Okay, and you can see here, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take this and slice this up into some just chunks. Put this right into my pan. Okay, and again, the skin is just the outer bit of an onion and it's not going to hurt you at all. Now, it's really important that your knife is sharp. A dull knife needs a lot more force in order to cut. A sharp knife needs less. You're much less likely to cut yourself with a sharp knife than you are with a dull knife. Now, the chicken. I'm going to put this to the side for just a second since we're working with the vegetables. And I'm going to show you about the carrot. This carrot's been cleaned, but I didn't peel it. Same thing with the ones that went in there. There's lots of nutrients in here. The only thing I'm going to get rid of is this stem. You can keep that, but I'm going to get rid of it. And again, you want to curl those fingers under. And we're just going to cut this up in any sort of way possible because we're not going to see these or use these. We're just trying to get flavor out. And I'm going to give them a little bit of an angled cut to get a little bit more surface area in order to get more flavor out of it. Now for the celery, again, the celery is washed. And I'm going to take my knife and I'm just going to cut down the center of this. that open and then again just sort of chop into rough cuts nothing really pretty or spectacular about that we're just trying to get the flavor it's not going to be served now I'm going to add a little bit of garlic just one clove but I'm going to show you how to get the garlic out of here very easily so take the base of the garlic put it down and give it a little bit of a hit and then turn it over and hit it again. And you'll be able to take off one clove pretty easily. Set that to the side. Set that to the side. Now, how do you peel this? Well, it's pretty easy. Take your knife and you just give it a squish. And look at what happens. That skin comes right off. Now, can you use the skin of the onion? Or the, the skin of the garlic? Absolutely. I'm not going to. I'm going to peel it just show you how to do that. And this was a bonus. I got three cloves out of this one. Very good. Okay. Let's take this. And there's very little that gets thrown away in my kitchen. This. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some herbs. I didn't have any fresh parsley, so I'm going to use some dried parsley. Uh, I normally use fresh parsley. This time I don't have fresh parsley. So I'm just going to use, um, it's about a tablespoon of dried parsley that I'm going to put in. And then I have from my garden some thyme that I just picked, put the whole thing in there, and some sage. Mm, this smells so beautiful, fresh from the garden. I'm going to put that all in there. Again, we're going to strain this so this is just for flavor. Now, let's get to our chicken. I have three different types of chicken here. I've got a whole chicken, which I made sure that there's nothing inside of this. Put this right inside here. I've got some chicken thighs that I'm gonna use. And then I'll be able to take all the chicken off of that and use that for another preparation. I'll show you that. And then the weird thing I've got, some chicken feet. You don't have to eat these. I lived in China for a while and I actually just got back from Shanghai and chicken feet are really delicious. However, most people don't like to look at them because they look a little odd, but they add lots and lots of flavor. And since nobody's gonna see them because we drain it all out, I'm gonna use these for flavor. Okay, just put chicken feet in here. 
They're inexpensive and they add tons and tons of flavor to your cooking. Now I touched chicken. I'm not gonna touch anything else. So I'm taking this pan, I'm going over to the sink and I'm gonna go wash my hands. Okay, I'm back. Now we've got everything in our pot. You can see it all there, yummy and delicious. And then we wanna fill this almost all the way to the top with water. Now I'm gonna put this on the stove first because it's gonna be heavy if I add all the water now and then carrying over is gonna be a little bit more difficult. But we wanna fill it to make sure everything's covered and then bring that to a boil. So as you can see, that is completely covered and it's ready to start the cooking process. Note, I didn't add any salt to this yet. Okay, so as you can see now, it's starting to boil and there's a film that's on the top. So I like to take a, a skimmer and have a bowl available next to it and just put all of that into a bowl and just skim it off as it's coming up. It kind of helps to keep the stock as clean as possible. And that's what we're going for. So as you can see, the chicken stock is boiling and I've skimmed off all of that foam that's on the top. And now I just want to turn this down and let this simmer. And this is going to simmer for about an hour and a half. And I'm going to cook it with a lid on it to keep all of those flavors inside. Okay, our chicken broth has been slowly cooking for about two hours. I've let it cool down a little bit and now I'm going to strain out the vegetables and the chicken. I've got two separate bowls here and I'm going to try to separate the chicken and the vegetables uh, in two different bowls. We'll see. So as I was stirring this along the way, um, the chicken feet sort of came to the surface and I happened to notice how cool that would be as sort of a Halloween stew. Yeah, something interesting to think about. Now I'm gonna save the chicken, I'm gonna to toss the vegetables, but I'm gonna save the chicken and I'm gonna use the uh, meat of the chicken to make you a chicken pot pie and we're gonna use this broth for the chicken pot pie, as well as making you a chicken soup. And we're gonna use the chicken meat for that as well. Okay, I got rid of most of the chicken and the vegetables from the stock. Now I'm going to strain it and I've got a fine mesh strainer. I got rid of the vegetables and I've saved the chicken. Now, question that some of you have asked me is, instead of using chicken feet, which they find look gross, is it okay to use something else? Well, I'd say chicken wings are also a really good option as well. They've got a lot of the gelatinous content in it that we're looking for from the chicken feet. Uh, they tend to be more expensive than chicken feet, um, but if you want to use chicken wings, of course, you can use those. So now what we should do is we should strain our stock. Do it slowly so you don't spill. There we go. Okay, so I've got a nice liquid here that I'm going to reduce down into a very thick fluid, and that's called a demi-glaze. And that's going to be the first thing we're going to do with our chicken stock. Okay, if you can see, there's a pan behind me that I've got cooking with that stock, and I'm gonna bring that down and reduce it or get rid of the liquid in it a little bit more than half. And when it's done, it's gonna be really nice and thick and gelatinous. And we call that a demi-glaze. It's gonna be a substitute for bouillon cubes. And then the rest of it right here is our stock that we've made. This is a beautifully rich chicken stock, but it's got no salt in it. Remember, I didn't put any salt in it yet. So I'm gonna taste it for flavor right now. Oh, just a little bit of the chicken fat on the top of it. Coats your mouth, tastes delicious. I get that really rich chicken flavor 
and a little hint of all those vegetables in the background, which is really nice. Like I said, this has no salt in it yet. This is how I like my stock. This way I season it at the end when I'm using it. This one I'm going to use to make a chicken soup, and this one I'm gonna to use to make a chicken stew that I can turn into a chicken pot pie. Hi, welcome back. Well, remember that stock that we made earlier and I took some of it, put it into a pan and reduced it halfway or evaporated it, got rid of the liquid out of half of it? Well, that's what we have here. Now look at the difference. This is the stock, look at how yellow this is, and this is that reduction. It's much more deep uh, color. This is just loaded with flavor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna taste this. There was no salt in it to see how much salt it needs. All that flavor has been condensed. Oh, the richness of that chicken flavor is amazing. I'm gonna end up putting that into some little containers here, if you can see. And put these into the freezer and they'll be little bouillon cubes. I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper in here. And I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in here as well. Not much. Now that I put the salt and pepper in there, I'm gonna transfer this into a measuring cup and pour that into my containers. And then it'll be great little flavor packets that, I, that can add a brightness of flavor to mm, sauces, to stews, and I'm actually gonna use it in another process to make some mashed potatoes, and I'll show you that in another episode. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna pour this into my measuring cup. Okay, and then just pour this into these little, this is actually an egg container. I like it because I just really, really like the size that these particular flavor cubes come out. Okay. So one. And then I've got some smaller ones. These uh, are actually, I use these for some chocolate process, but they're also great for this too. So these are gonna be just a little bit smaller. This is something that you can use to put like a flavor boost into something, whereas those egg size ones um, can be used as the um, uh, originating flavor for a lot of your processes, for a lot of your food. Yeah, it's almost perfect. Very good. These will go in the freezer, and once they're frozen, I will take them out and I'll put them into a container and just leave them there and I can just take them out individually. They're also going to get very gelatinous and I'm, I'll show you what will happen to those because um, I'm going to put some of this into a container and just let it sit in the refrigerator and you'll see how thick that gets. Hi, welcome back to the kitchen. So you remember that demi-glaze that we made, the reduced stock? Well, we put them into little uh, individual serving sizes and froze them. Well, here they are. Let me show you what they look like. Look at this beautiful cube of flavor burst. These small ones, I'm gonna put all of these into the freezer, use them a little bit later on. They're already frozen, so it's a perfect way to keep them like this. Um, these little ones are great to just toss into a little bit of, of uh, rice to give them a chicken flavor at the very end of the cooking. Um, and then we've got these bigger ones. Look at how beautiful these are. Nice and flavorful. And these I am also gonna freeze. And these are great to uh, give a little bit more flavor to larger things. Um, I'm gonna use some of these to make mashed potatoes a little bit later. But these are absolutely fantastic. And we're just gonna put these in the freezer, let them sit until we need them. And these will last in the freezer probably a good, oh, I don't know, um, two or three months. You know, just depending. These never last me three months because I use them all the time. Like I said, it's concentrated chicken flavor with very, very little salt. 
which is great for hypertensive patients or somebody with high blood pressure. It's another name for hypertension. So here we go. I'm going to put those in the freezer. Now, remember the rest of the demi glaze that we put into a container? Well, here it is. I don't know if you can see this, how jiggly this is. You can hear that. That's fantastic. I just take scoops of this. Look at this. Look at how gelatinous this is. It's like eating jello. Look. Beautiful. We don't want it to go in place. This is just pure concentrated chicken flavor. This is going to be great to make um, a soup, to add that flavor to the soup, bring that water to the boil, put this in there. This is just fantastic. Um, I use it for many, many processes. And this will last in the refrigerator probably about a month. Now, again, I don't let this sit for an entire month. We use this for everything. Now you can do a beef one, you can do chicken, you can do any sort of poultry, you can even do a pork demi-glaze. It's much more difficult to do a vegetable demi-glaze because vegetables don't have that gelatinous material in them that uh, turns into this jelly when you cook it down. But this is great for just about any kind of meat and it's called a demi-glaze, very reduced concentrated stock. I hope you have decided to make your own chicken stock or beef stock or pork stock or whatever type of stock you want. Um, it's really, really worth it. You get to control the amount of salt and all the other flavorings in it and it makes your diet a little bit more healthy. Um, hi, we're back. So I took some of that stock that we made and I put it into a saucepan because now we're gonna make chicken soup. What I'm gonna do is uh, cut up some vegetables for you that are gonna go into the chicken soup and I'll show you what I've got. I've got some celery. So I wanna take the celery and I wanna cut the celery down the center in order to make it a little bit smaller. And then these sections that are a little fatter here, we kind of cut that as well, just to make sure that you've got small sizes. Now I washed my celery, that's pretty much all I did to it. And then I'm just going to take my fingers, curl them under, and I'm just going to make some even slices. Now, if you don't feel comfortable chopping like a chef, you can just chop, Pick it up and chop it into some small, even sized pieces. Yeah, they're about, probably about a half an inch. So, okay. This is going to be enough for two servings, so I really only need one stalk of celery. Celery is a very powerful flavor, so you don't want to use too much of it, or it'll overwhelm everything. Okay, put that into our pan. Notice this is cool. I haven't heated this up yet. Everything is gonna start at the same temperature. Now I've got two carrots. I haven't peeled this carrot. I've just washed it to get it nice and clean. I like it with the skin on. You can peel it if you want, you don't have to. I am gonna take the top of this carrot off though. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. Now, I'm gonna show you two different ways to chop a carrot. Give yourself a manageable piece that big. Hold it between your fingers so it doesn't roll because this is going to roll and if you try and cut into it you can hurt yourself and cut it in half. Then you've got a flat surface that's not going to roll around and then I like to cut it in half again and then give myself sort of triangular dices and then cut it about the same size that you cut the slices of celery. And again keep your fingers turned under so that you aren't cutting yourself. We don't want you to lose a finger. Then I'm gonna to have to pull out my doctor skills and do that for you. Okay. Or you can just hold on to the back of this and give it a little push and give yourself some slices, however you want your carrot to look. And again, you're using your finger as a guide and you're using your back finger, your thumb, to slide it forward, okay? Very good. So you can either have slices or dices. It's totally up to you. And you 
want to try and make them as even as you possibly can so that everything cooks at the same pace and it all looks nice. Now the next thing I would put in here is an onion, except I'm going to do something a little different and I'm going to use a scallion or a green onion. I'm going to take off the root end of this, put this to the side. Now remember, these are good. You could use these in another stock. I'm going to throw them away. And then I just want to clean up the ends of this as well. And I'm going to just take this and give this a rough chop. They're going to sort of melt a little bit, so you're not going to be able to see the specific structure on these. And it's just a different flavor than what you would have with a regular onion. Okay. Put this in here. Very good. Now I'm going to use some garlic and remember how I showed you how to take the outer casing off of the garlic. Take your knife, put it down on here, use the palm of your hand and give it a hit. And you can see the clove of garlic comes out very nicely. Now I'm going to dice this up so I don't care how it looks. If you care how it looks, don't hit it quite so hard. I'm just going to use one. And all I'm going to do to finally mince this is to just kind of give it a little bit of a mince like this on each side, chop it, and then use my hand to steady my knife on the cutting board and just sort of chop it up really fine. You don't want gigantic chunks of garlic in your soup. You're just looking for a really nice flavor. And when you get it to the consistency that you want, be very careful when you are taking uh, items off of your knife. You don't want to cut yourself. When you get it to the consistency and the size that you want, you can just pick it up and put it on your, in your pan. Get all those yummy bits. Now, the next thing I'm going to need is some fresh sage. Now I only have two leaves here, and the reason I only have two leaves is fresh sage can be very powerful. So I've got the two, I'm gonna put them together and I'm gonna roll them up, and I'm going to slice them really fine. And this is something called chiffonade. And then I'm gonna give it another sort of rough little chop here. Kinda of like I did with the garlic. I'm going to put that right into our pan. And then one final herb that we've got here, and that is parsley. We've already taken it off the stem, so I'm just going to do a rough chop on this as well. Now, there are two common parsleys that are used in cooking. There's curly parsley, and there's Italian flat leaf parsley. I've got Italian flat leaf parsley here. Just happened to be what was on sale at my store day that I went grocery shopping. Okay, very good. Let me just pick this all up and put that into my pan. Uh, two mm, last ingredients. Remember all of that chicken that we took off of the, I uh, took out of our stock? Well, I took it off of the bone and I shredded it up a little bit. You can see, here it is. I'm gonna give this a little taste. Mmm, so juicy, so good. I'm going to put that into our pan. And one final ingredient that my husband really likes, and that is this pearl barley. So this is a, a chicken barley soup. Okay. And then we'll put this on the stove, bring that to a boil, down to a simmer, and let that cook about 20 minutes or 30 minutes until the barley is nice and tender. Hi, welcome back. So the soup has been simmering for about 25 minutes, just long enough for the uh, barley to get nice and tender. Now I'm gonna give it a real quick taste. It's a clean spoon. Let's turn this around a little bit. Oh, that is so good. That chicken flavor really pops through. 
and all of the spiciness of those herbs and those vegetables in the background. Really, really great. Now, there's very little fat in this, just a little bit of fat from the chicken stock, which there was hardly any of that. Um, and there's no salt in here yet. So it does need a little bit of salt just to brighten up the flavor. So I'm gonna take a grinding, put a couple grindings of salt in here and a couple grindings of pepper. And now give it a little quick stir. And while I'm doing that, I'm pouring myself a bowl of this beautiful soup. So beautiful. And I'm gonna to top it with a little bit of cheese. You don't have to. I'm Sicilian, I like cheese in my soup. Let's give this a taste. All those vegetables in there as well as chicken. Mm. Those vegetables are still crunchy. That chicken flavor is so prevalent. The cheese adds just a little bit of creaminess. And that chicken is so juicy, it's ridiculous. This is a beautiful fall soup, if I've ever tasted one just warms you up inside. And that's just one of the processes that we can make with that chicken stock from earlier. Uh, we're gonna be making a few other ones, come on back in a few minutes and we'll start that. And while you're away, I'm gonna finish this soup. It is so good. Mm. Thank you for watching The Doctors in Cooking with Kathy. Today we made chicken stock and chicken soup. Keep an eye out for future episodes. You might see that chicken stock pop back up again. Subscribe and stay on top of the latest episodes.